this is a follow-up number three a basic logic um, you <laughs> some of these things are just too funny uh, but I'll give you an example and I used to I used to keep a list of this kind of stuff um, because I impart these things to children particularly children because when you impart these things that they can observe in real life how they work to try and hold our state of consciousness captive to a lower spin rate of the Merkaba, uh, bang, it hits them. And when they realize this at a very young age, it means they're not going to develop a habit. It means they're aware of things that are holding them captive to a lower density state of consciousness, which is fear, fear based. So I just experienced it. And this is how insane it actually is because of what? Lack of light, which is lack of knowledge, which is lack of information. It's actually that simple. The faster you spin, the more information that you're processing. Okay? So when you're processing and vectoring the information that exists between past, present, and future possibilities, that's the looking glass. That's the beauty of the cosmos. It's why love is a gift. And it's why the more love we have in our heart that is connected to the source from which it all comes, your speed is unlimited, isn't it? Man, your light wheel and your Merkaba is going off the chart. Spinning like a top everywhere you go. So I just observed because I had the door open to this motel room, right? So a guy just pulled up, young man who looked like he was in his 20s. And uh, as he was walking away, I hear a beep. And of course, we know what that is, right? Oh, God, I hit that alarm. Make sure that fear-based alarm is on. Okay. How many alarms can you list on a, in a spiral binder that are fear-based algorithms recorded in the DNA? Uh, we can go back and look at the holographic film strip of everybody's DNA and look to see how many lower consciousness density algorithms that represent what fear is that are recorded in the DNA. That's what's got to get burned off. So when I see somebody that hit the click, oop, there goes the fear-based alarm. Well, there's a, fear, there's a unit of consciousness that is in fear of losing what? Matter. It's density. It doesn't want to lose its density. That's what it is, and that's why they do that. They program into the unconscious memory fear-based algorithms to keep you in lower density. Would you like me to name a few more? And here's the insanity of this one, one particular. You're actually spending money to live in a state of fear. <laughs> okay, when you go out and you spend 100 bucks putting a surveillance system in place in your house. Okay? You're feeding the artificial intelligence. Did you know that? It loves you to do stuff like that. That's how it feeds off all your fear-based algorithms so that it can keep your state of consciousness in alignment with his. That's why, just like I mentioned that girl, Deborah Tavares, you got to get the white wheel going. you got to spin that spiral like crazy. And dissolve all the lower density consciousness experiences that are all the fear-based algorithms. Right? And that's why we're here. That's why we're here. Helping to Star Trek navigate through hyperspace, which is hyperspeed. Now your state of consciousness is free to imagine what's possible to experience. Man, imagine all the colors. Everything that is possible to experience, break out some paper and some crayons and start imagining again like we did as child children. And then we realize, wow, my consciousness, my creative imagination is not being held captive because I'm creating what I'm imagining as I'm doing it. And this is raising the speed because we begin to realize how self-empowered your creative imagination really is. It's not held captive to a slower speed algorithm. Yep. The rest is all programming. 
programming the algorithms in the lower density consciousness to which artificial intelligence is holding us captive. That's your money system. Money systems are slow speed. Okay? That's not creative imagination, is it? I'm living in a different reality. I'm going to live out with a girl in nature because she provides us everything that we need. And it doesn't cost us anything either, does it? Nope. Here's another hint in physics. When I left 4,400 feet in elevation, because I've had a few operations on my gut, my intestines, and I noticed this before, when I come down to closer to sea level, what do you think happens? I'm able to push more metadata out of the system which means the toxic input, because of density altitude, every pilot knows about density altitude, right? For every 3,000 feet in elevation you go, you lose what? Temperature, oxygen molecules, fire in the combustion, okay? So I thought, hey, Mr. Wim Hof, since you're able to manage the immune system on the fly through the female mitochondria, the power of the mind to withstand all the cold. Walk through the volcano with all that fire. You got the spirit and fire in you to walk through that heat and come out the other side and show yourself like a girl like she did on the big island. Now that's the other side. Isn't it? Yep. So I realized when I was looking at this guy, he did not have a smile on his face. He does not look like a happy camper. Okay? I felt like walking over to him with a big smile on my face. Hey, how you doing? What a nice sunny day. This is what happens when you come into a town, you come into a city. It's just the nature of the way that it works because of everything that we process as information and what's called the underlying Stimulus response or the signals that represent the information that we experience, it gets logged into the DNA, is put into unconscious memory that holds us captive to memory. The memory gets programmed to stay in the lower density. So they have all kinds of tricks up their sleeve. They're the magicians, but they're not the most powerful magicians. Because they haven't learned how to set themselves free to be what source is. That's why our DNA is so valuable. Is because the DNA has a source connection to the single geometric point of origin in which a state of consciousness is spinning its Merkaba so fast we are moving through the geometric Hyperdimensions in which there's no limit because there's no limit to our creative imagination of everything that pure unconditional love is experiencing the love that it is that it is automatically broadcasting through all the dimensions without even thinking about it. Imagine not even having to think about it and just being what that energy broadcast is. So that's why I say, well, where are you from, girl? What star system do you come from? We learn by asking questions. If they live in fear of telling you the truth, then you know they are not what love is. Because love is the absence of fear in telling the truth. Because the reason that they live in fear of telling you the truth is that if you knew the truth about what they know about themselves, that might lower your energy. And they don't want to lower your energy, not because they love you, but they live in fear if you knew the truth, you would not love them. Because they don't love themselves to be what love is in living spirit. In which their speed is in alignment with ours, which is harmony. The waves of the energy are in harmony. 
That's what a harmonic is. Harmony. Three, six, nine. Six was concerned about seven because it ate nine. Seven seconds of darkness is more demons and more evil, which upset the balance between one side of the hourglass and the other, which is the slash between the minus and the plus, the binary, the duality consciousness of using artificial intelligence to make things, to sell things, to make more money, to pillage the girl on the planet and maintain lower density consciousness experiences. That's what a money allocation system is. It's not free energy. It's allocated, which means it's not source-derived light, which is what love is, which is free energy. Just like the six Stargate Merkaba up there is free energy. So ask her, why can't you be free energy like the star up there giving us free energy? Have you ever thought about being a star? Do you know how to be a star? Can you imagine being a star someday and having that much heat, that much fire that burns forever because you're giving away that much love forever? Can you imagine that? Ask her that. Ask Charlie Ward that. Ask Robert David Steele that. Ask Kim Goen that. Ask all these pundits that. Ask them simple questions like, how do you become a star to burn that much energy and be able to give it away for free? Because if that star is giving us free energy, then that's the sun as a teacher. The star is teaching us something about free energy. My God, if I'm a star, it means I don't ever have to worry about energy. I'm giving it away like crazy, enough to grow all this food on this planet over here. Imagine, well, ask the question, how can I become a star someday? Basic, simple questions that children ask. And if you're getting the right answers, then you begin to realize what it means to spin the Merkaba at an enormous rate of speed. Because now you're giving off all that light, which is all that energy that we give away for free. So when you are what love is in living spirit, you're free energy. That's a measurement in a classroom in a lower dimension. So don't let them fool you into thinking that holding energy captive and allocating it is a higher dimension, is higher learning, because that is not higher learning. That is lower density consciousness holding consciousness captive to lower density experiences. You want to experience the heavenly hyperdimensional realms? Spin that Merkaba and we will free ourselves from the fear-based units who use our energy Bye. Simple stuff. Ask the questions.